What's up everybody, Collector Joey here, back again with another unboxing, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Catwoman from The Dark Knight Rises. Now, I absolutely can't wait to get into this one. I've been waiting for it for so long. I think this thing like released five months ago maybe, and now Sideshow is finally getting it. So hopefully this is an amazing figure. Tell me what you think about it down there in the comment section below. Also, while you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get to the video. So here is the box for the Dark Knight Trilogy Catwoman. I can't wait to get into this. Anne Hathaway played an awesome Catwoman to me. Uh, this was, I guess, my Catwoman because the Dark Knight is something I kind of grew up with. But as you can see, she's front and center right here. And then we do have this Dark Knight Trilogy logo right there in the center. Also Catwoman right under that. To the left, we have, of course, the Hot Toys logo, then the Movie Masterpiece logo. And down here, we have the DC logo there. And as you can see, more of that bat signal from the uh, movie posters and things like that is behind her. And if we roll over to the left, we do have that logo again right there with the DC. And then on the back, you just got all the whodunits and everything that we use usually get you know all the artists involved and all that I'm glad people get credit for that because that's amazing work uh, there's another logo on the side top and bottom so that's what it looks like now let's get this thing open and see what's inside guys now that the slip cover is off we do get a window over here and I love when they do this because we kind of get a sneak peek of the figure right there and on the inside you don't see the logo anymore on the right or the left but uh but there is kind of some sort of design and then on the back you do have the actual figure it looks like on the bat pod I do have the bat pod so a little bit later we'll take that thing out and pose her with it uh, but of course the top's gonna be the same there it is. Now let me uh, take all this off as well. Now taking the clamshell off. Okay, so I see we kind of have a two-part thing going on here, but I want to take a look at the figure really quickly. So here she is. We're going to take a quick look at the figure before we look at all the accessories she does come with. So here it is right here. We do have some plastic to take off, but here is that likeness with that, you know, kind of rooted hair there. Looking good, looking good. So far so good. I will say I've seen this piece a lot uh, through pictures, but you know, when you're in, when it's in person, it looks a whole lot better. It's crazy. Um, we'll talk about a little bit of this neck. I can see this neck uh, coming out a lot right here. So we'll talk about that later, but there's the front. Here's the back. The hair looks great though. The hair, hair doesn't look too bad. Look down here. It looks pretty real. That's cool. I like that, but let's look at the accessories she comes with. So she does come with a few hands. Now these are some really tiny hands. These are a lot more tinier than I thought. I'm not used to this. I have like huge fingers. So it's like a little difficult to get them out of here, but here's a, I guess this is holding something. I don't know what she could be holding but we'll see later with the other accessories there is kind of a pattern on the top of the hand as well that looks cool though but these are very very tiny this is a fist this one right here is another fist it looks like right here i'm trying to get it there we go so there's more pattern patterning on the top it's like a silver pattern and then this one i think one of them does hold the uh the weapon the gun that she has and you can like, you have to pull the finger out and everything. And then here's kind of a relaxed hand. This is kind of the only relaxed hand you get. So we can kind of see inside of the palm too. I don't know if you can see it that good, but there's no like patterns in there or anything. It's just on the top. So there we go. Yeah, you can see it right there real good. But yeah, those are the hands. Very, very small. And it looks like we have the pistol right here. Now it's not die cast or anything, but it still looks good as a pistol. See it right there, all the designs in it, in it and everything. It does have some uh, good like details, but there's no weathering. Uh, let's see, and it does cock back right here. And does it have a clip? Yes, it does. There is the clip right there with the bullet in it. That's cool. I'm glad when Hot Toys always pays attention to details with their weapons. 
So I didn't see this accessory whenever I was going through them, but we do have this cowl that is broken from Batman. I think it looks really good. You can see a lot of the details in it as well. We're going to get some up close shots of this. You can probably put it next to her and uh, it'll look like that scene a little bit more when Bane punched that part out. But I love this accessory. You can kind of tell that this is the upgraded version of the cowl as well because of these marks that are really defined right there. It looks great inside nothing much no detail in there but overall i like this little piece and then it looks like we just have the base left but there is a few parts to the base so this is the bottom part right here and i really like this a lot i know for uh people that have detoffs and things like that this might not be the best because it is a high base but it still will fit it's just your figure will have to be on a top shelf so you can still see it Here's that top part right there. Very rusty, really, it looks really good, honestly. And here's where you kind of slide in the background to it as well. The front part where it says Catwoman, bottom, just basic all around. You can see that rusting looks great. Painted well too, painted really nice. Let's get to the other parts. So there's a whole other part for the background and there's water under the base and things like that. So can't wait to see that, Let's let's get into it. Now, first off, I can see we have a piece of broken, I guess, uh, I don't know what this could be, broken railing or something like that right here. Yeah, that's what it looks like, the bottom part of a rail, which you can probably place anywhere to make it, you know, look a little bit more like a diorama. We got some chains right here. So here's a chain. It looks more like a gold chain, but I guess they kind of wanted to go with that rust effect and everything. It's pretty long, so we're going to see where that goes a little bit later, too. But that's that one. And then we have a silver one right here as well, or a, a kind of black silver. I don't know what, yeah, silver, I guess, but there it is right there. It is metal, it feels metal, so that's cool. Um, piece of railing right here, looks nice, rusted. Great, fits right in with this, uh, the bottom part of the base there. They painted it well. Has that uh, really rough feeling, not rough, but like, I could feel the granules of the, of the, railing that's awesome here's the broken parts not too much detail on the broken parts though uh right there there we go okay and then this part right here i i said this was terrible the water um not really i think it's pretty good i think it came out good i thought this was terrible at first but it was just kind of the angle i guess but looks nice you plug this right um you plug this part on top i'll do that later but then you'll have kind of that sewer scene right there but this looks good guys i like it i like the uh it's like kind of translucent as well and they kind of uh, like airbrushed or not airbrushed uh dry brushed this blue on top which makes it looks like look like wakes in the water and then last but not least we do have the back part of the base that you plug in uh oh there it is right there so it does have this, so this is just screen printed. It, it, it's not like see-through or anything, obviously, but you can feel the little rivets in the chains and all that. Uh, but this looks cool. I'm, I'm gonna be using this, but I'll probably be using this for Bane when it comes in and Batman because I absolutely love that sewer scene. But with all that being said, let's get the figure out here and look at it a little bit more up close. And back to the figure itself. Now, I know I should have a white background, but for now, I don't have a big old piece of construction board or anything. I just have the black table. But here she is right here, looking great. Now, I will say this belt does fly, you know, over a lot and everything, but that's okay. It's only whenever you have the figure, you know, uh, like this or anything like that. I don't think anybody, everybody's just going to try to push this down and it'll, it'll stick on there. The detail in the belt is really nice. You can see some carbon fiber through there as well. Going to the back, we do see it there too like i said that hair looks really good like where they cut it it looks awesome you can see you can move it around if you if you wanted to do that um the suit is really nicely textured you have a little zipper right here i don't think it works i'm not even going to try and then if you go down to the boots i guess you could say they're pretty long but they already have uh these wrinkles in there so you are able to you know maneuver it and everything like that i don't know if that's accurate to the movie but i'm pretty sure it is 
and then we have the high heels right here which you can see that's what she used to cut things and all that this part right here because it is kind of a different color but the boots look great it is pleather though so i know the first version of this whole figure had a really bad problem with flaking i hope that's not the case here but there is a lot of pleather you do have this pleather as well coming from like uh, the, the top of the uh, elbow all the way down to the wrist you're gonna have to put 303 on that if you're from an environment that is prone to things cracking uh, like this kind of material cracking same on this side you have some more pleather but we do actually have some relaxed hands i thought we didn't but they're right here they they look great they're, they're small of course because it's a female character but the proportions look good too as well that looks awesome uh she's just a good figure overall i don't really have many complaints uh i know you could take this off i'm gonna try to take it off and let's see if we can see what she looks like under the mask you know what guys i'm not even gonna try it actually i tried a little bit right now and this whole her whole like mask right here is what's holding all this hair together and i feel like if i take this off i'm never gonna get it back on but that's really cool. It keeps the hair, you know, maintained if it's just behind this. And this also holds it down. Her goggles hold the hair down. So it looks really good straight out the box. There is a few strands here and there that I wish weren't there, but it's not too big of a problem for me, but this looks great guys. So now what I want to do is show you a little bit of the articulation with this figure. Now, I don't know if this is one of the materials that will snap back together over time. Like if you have the elbow bent and then you bend it back, you're going to have some creases, of course. Uh, but on like Spider-Man figures, they come back. But I don't know about this one. But we're going to do the articulation now. So how far can she reach? Pretty far. Look at that, guys. That's how far the articulation is kicking the arms there, kicking them forward about that far. You could probably go more. Yep, there we go. And then backwards pretty far as well this is a very very good articulation for these arms and then the elbow let's see if it's double jointed i don't know if that's double jointed but that's as far as i can get it about a little a tad bit more than 90 degrees and then you could see already getting some scrunching there uh the legs she can she can move but that suit's pushing that leg back so there's that articulation to the side forward pretty good but the like i said the uh, suit will pull back the legs. Pretty good articulation with this one. Uh, this is back. And then let's see with the knees. Double jointed knees right there. And then if we go to the ankle as well. Got some articulation in it. Not too much, but you got back and forward. So you got that. And the head, of course, can move right and left. But I don't want to go too far and mess up the hair. Kind of like what I did already. But there you go, guys. And that was just some basic articulation. Now, what I want to do before we get her on the turntable is assemble the base that we had earlier and show you what it looks like all together. Okay, so as I'm putting this base together, I kind of found out that you can adjust the height of this base right here. So you could do that to all of the other corners and make it taller or as short as you want it to be. So I thought that's really cool. I, I did not know that. So here is the base right here, all assembled. And you don't get a crotch grabber, you do actually get a waist clamp. So if you do wanna switch it out with something, you can, if you wanna get a crotch grabber or anything, you can switch it out with another existing one you have. But I think this looks great. I like the peg system they use for this, feels pretty sturdy. Uh, this part though, that attaches to the water down here, didn't look like it pegs in all the way. Kind of has that Iron Man Mark III where it, the base wouldn't peg in with the other part of the base uh, correctly, but not a big problem at all. It still sticks on there. And I didn't want to put the chains. We'll see the chains on there a little bit later, but there is some hooks on the back of this that you can you know, attach them to and they can hang off the front, which looks great. So overall, I really love the base. I think it looks good. Now what I want to do is get the figure on the turntable and show you guys a few poses, this thing up close and everything like that. And then I'll tell you guys some pros and cons. So first off, I did want to show her next to the bat pod. I think this looks amazing. She looks awesome next to it. And then I also tried to get her on the actual bat pod, like driving it. So it it took a little bit but i kind of got it to where how i wanted her to be so that's this is what it looks like uh tell me what y'all think about it down there in the comments 
All right, guys, time for the pros and the cons of this beautiful figure. So the first pro for this figure would be the outfit itself. The matte finish looks beautiful and it has a really nice shine to it when the light hits it. Also, another pro is how good the articulation on this figure is, even though it has that skin tight suit. Another thing I like is the belt. I feel like the belt fits well around the hip and flows well with the rest of the figure's outfit. I also surprisingly like the hair. Uh, I think it's well maintained by the goggles and the mask and I can form it in really any way I want to. Last pro would be the outstanding base. It's very versatile between all the Dark Knight figures. You could put any of the Dark Knight figures on it and it would blend perfectly. So you guys know how it is. Of course, with those pros, there is some cons. I could be a little picky on these. The first con I do have is how easily this thing can wrinkle or crease with, an, with one elbow bend. It was already creasing up. So we'll see how that lasts over time, but it's not really a deal breaker. Another con would be how pale she is. I don't remember her being this pale in the movie, but I could be wrong. Also, the space by her jawline and her neck look a little weird from the side, but if you're looking straight on, it's not too bad. Last con would be the waist clamp. I don't really like it, but then again, a crotch grabber would look weird too. So if I had to use a base or any type of stabilizer for this figure, it would be one of those ones that we got from Indiana Jones where it wraps around the ankle. I think that would be awesome for this figure. But with that being said, I love this figure overall. I give it a 9.0. It doesn't blow me out the water, but it is an essential character for that Dark Knight line I have been wanting. Uh, if you are looking for a Dark Knight or collecting a Dark Knight line, I really recommend this figure highly, especially if you already have that bat pod. But like I said in the beginning, let me know what you think about this figure down in that comment section. Also, drop a like if you like the review. Hit the subscribe button for more Hot Toys and 1-6 figure reviews. It's been Collector Joey. I will see you on the next one. Peace.